Hello, my long lost inky friends. Hello, Heather. Hello, 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 everyone. How is everybody? I'm turning on my fan. I'm going to close my email because that's going to be dinging in our ears. Okay. All right. I have got, I have so many things for you guys tonight. Um, I have the Bob Ross surprise to show everybody. Uh, let's see here. Where am I? There I am. Let's say a quick hello. But before I do, if you're tuning into the replay, you know the drill. Only the cool kids hang out for the next eight minutes. Or you can skip forward and miss out on all the other things. So nevertheless, there's that said. A quick hello to Allie. Nice to see your beautiful face. Nice to see you as well, Elizabeth. We haven't seen you in a while. Lee, nice to see you always, of course. And Ruby, of course, always nice to see all of you. Ruby and Dana, and that's the only ones we have chatting. I got, I got, I got more people watching here. Not a lot of people chat, and I'm like that too. I'll go to a live. What about you, Heather? Do you chat or do you like lurk? Um, kind of depends. If Watched a few times, I might start to chat, but for the first little bit, I lurk. Yeah, I, I'm mostly a lurker. Unless it's like, I don't know, sometimes I'll say something, but I got this whole thing of goodies to show you guys. I went up to Scrap and Dippity um, to pick out a stamp set for class. So if you're local, uh, watch for this and there's one of these in stock so I'm giving you a heads up right now it's the pink fresh um, well the name is probably right here rainbow floral um, it's this one not the dyes not this one but this one so if you're local there's one of those left in stock the rest will have to be ordered I've also made the exclusive stencil that you can only get in that kit there she is. I will have this available on my website for, yes, my U.S. people. You will have to, you can tune into it live, but I doubt you'll get your kit in time because the class, I believe, is on the 28th. So we're kind of scrambling. We're a little under the gun on this one. Future classes should be on time. But there's that. All of those classes that I'm doing for um, Scrap and Dippity will all have an exclusive stencil made by yours truly. Uh, next month, we're going to do Halloween. I am putting together uh, this weekend the kits for Halloween. I totally changed it up, what I said I was going to do for Halloween cards. But if you're into Halloween and you want to have some fun with that, I will do uh, at least one or two of the lives as well. Will be fun reasons for Halloween. And even if you don't celebrate Halloween, you know somebody who makes cards. And if you don't, you can't say you don't know somebody who makes cards because you know me and you know Heather. So there you go. You can send us a card. <laughs> we would like that. So I am going to do an Inky Bestie card exchange as well for Halloween and Christmas. I'm going to launch those on Monday. So if you are an Inky Bestie, make sure you're in the Inky Bestie group. And if you're like, what? Then I'm going to ask you what rock you've been living under because I've been sending out emails for it for the last two months. But if you've lost your emails or I'm in your junk folder or whatever, reach out to me and say, I need to get in the Inky Bestie group and we will talk about it. Okay. Um, so with that being said, where's my boss, Ro my boss, Rob, I did that last time. Where's my boss, Rob lovers at? Where's my boss, Rob, my Rob boss. Oh Lord. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you. What she said. Where are all my raw Bob <laughs> Bob Ross lovers at? Oh, Judy Wakefield. Oh, I would I would send Halloween cards to the people I would send Christmas cards to if I sent Christmas cards. I send Halloween cards to the people I would send Christmas cards to if I sent Christmas cards. <laughs> Okay, I get it. I get it. But where are my Bob Ross lovers at? I want to see a thumbs up because I, um, you probably know I do Lego art and there is a Bob Ross Lego dude. Okay. So I ordered him up and I created these backgrounds myself. These are not Bob Ross backgrounds because there's a copyright infringement there. 
I can't print Bob Ross backgrounds and sell them. You know what I mean? So I did a very good job, I think, with these renditions, same as no different, kind of, if you will, of Bob Ross paintings. But everyone says we don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents. So here is the first one. So as you can see, it's on high quality paper. There's a little Bob Ross dude here. This one is in a white frame, okay? And this, because this one's the one I'm gonna put in my studio. Um, I'm very limited on white frames, but, and this is the black one. So, oh, here we go. So it says the same saying, and I try to make the sayings kind of blend in so they're not, you know, really loud and whatnot, but there is that one. Look at the, look at him. Oh, focus, come on. You get the point. Now you know what they are when they go up on the website. There's two other backgrounds. One is here and one is here. Okay, so they all say the same thing. All right, that's the best saying. And when you see those go up, which will probably be next week, you know what they are. There are two grab bags left. Shipping is fixed on those. Okay, and um, if you for some reason, and <laughs> Karen, <laughs> thank you. If for some reason you have an order that was being processed and you think it should have been sent, let me know because we were doing a revamp on some of the shipping and I was trying to get some things fixed and um, I was asked about orders that were processed or I was asked if all orders were cleared and I said yes except a certain amount of names because I have orders for other people that are being held. So everything else got dumped. So if you, I missed yours, like Karen, I missed yours and your, your order got dumped. Let me know. So except Jen, cause of course we're working that out and Christina to send, I'm going to send you your invoice. But aside from that, so if you, um, two grab boxes left and, um, uh, everybody's raving about them by the way. So thank God I was a little nervous doing my very first grab boxes. I was like, I hope I put enough and I put too much. So with that being said, Let's dive into this stuff because I have got the scrapbook store, Scrap and Dippity. If you're not aware, the Brenda's of the world. Um, I'm trying to think of my other Calgary people right now. It's escaping me. But they have a big $5 sale, which is better than their store closing 50% off and then whatever other deals they did. So I'll tell you which ones were 50 or $5 as I go. But I did get the um, Tim Holtz. What happened? That was me. I had okay. to go out and come back. I That's was okay. Glitchy. Oh, she was glitchy. So I did get the, the Tim Holtz Halloween. I will get the Tim Holtz Christmas. I don't have the Christmas on me because they weren't in the system yet. Thank you, Georgie. So Georgie's going to hold the Christmas ones for me. Do you see what we pay in Canada? Do you see this? Do you see what we pay in Canada? Ugh. Anyway, so I got those. Then... I got on Timu and I got some, oh, I got to tell you about this first. Um, I love the Stampin' Up foam, okay? Sticky, you know, square, or they're honeycombs, right? And the reason I love them is because they give me all of it. So a lot of companies that have all the squares and circles, the, the, the other part is taken out and I feel like it's a waste of my money when these are, anyway, so I found these on Timu and I've been investigating them and they are super sticky. Um, these are like the mini ones that Stampin' Up! has. So I wanted to buy them so that I could tell you guys I get them on Timu rather than Stampin' Up! because I never mention it because I don't deal with Stampin' Up! right? So I got those on Timu. So watch for these on Timu. Now I got... A whole bunch of little um, silicone. It, these are on Amazon too, but they're way cheaper on Timu. So these I can pour my wax in and use them on cards. You could put hot glue in these as well. I've actually watched some people doing hot glue with these on Instagram. And then use the Tim Holtz um, foundry, you know, the foundry stuff on a liquid, wax. whatever it is. I, it says foundry wax, but it's not very waxy. So the foundry waxy, non-waxy, cool stuff, okay? Because then you can kind of, you know, make it all fancy schmancy. So here, let me just get a pair of scissors. I probably should have taken these all out before the stream, but I didn't. This one I thought was really cool because it says happy 
happy birthday, right? You could just fill that right up and then how cute is that? I just thought that was so stinking adorable. Now this one here, I really, really like. I don't know what all this business is. Like this stuff you could probably just like get rid of it. You don't need that. So cogs, look at those. Can you imagine you just pour in your wax and then oh, you've got cogs for days, you know, on those cards you struggle for it with masculine cards or whatever. How fun is that? Get dirty. This one, I want to do little planets. Like these are half domes. Oh, it's kind of dirty. This is really thin here. So be careful. I can see how thin that is. So be careful when you're cleaning that one because I can see through it. But nevertheless, look at those little planets. I don't know. What other little things can you do with like half dome circles? So cute, right? You could do, oh, the little bitty ones you could do embellishments, but you'd be there for a month. Buy a couple. <laughs> yeah, buy a couple because on Timu they're super cheap. Just put in silicone, um, silicone um, resin, uh, silicone uh, mold, silicone mold for resin. Put that in, okay? Because more, normally people are putting resin in these, but here, leaves. Oh my goodness. So do like a little blendy blend with your wax, like a gold, an orange, and a brown or a deep green and then blendy blend, and then pour it in there. Mm, so perfect. So I wanted to show you those because I said I was going to order some of those. So let me get rid of all of this quick. I always hate it when people don't plan their videos, and it's like, I don't need to see you un taking everything out of a box. Okay, so foil quill. I have seen this forever, Um all the time, but I wasn't spending no 60, 70 bucks on it because that's what it is in Canada, $60. And I've seen it as low as 50, but I was like, I'm not, I, I don't even know if it works, so I'm not buying it. But I have a Cricut one that I haven't used. And this one apparently is a heat one and you put it in your Cricut. So I don't know, I guess I gotta plug this in and there's a long cord so it can move across and near, 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 near. And it can write and apparently it does this with your cricket which if it does what a game changer um, this would actually be this would actually be good for the inky bestie um, I'll try it out I could do the both of them on the cricket because we do a um, I'll try it out video now we're gonna do the Simon Hurley stamping foam this month and try it on different things and see if it really works or not. And speaking of Inky Besties, we have a color with me this month and a mixed media. And of course the, I'll try it out. Um, on top of all the other things with the, um, bestie space where you go and stamp and chat. Actually, Karen was telling me that her and Lee were in there for like three hours this afternoon. So how fun is that? Now be careful when you're ordering your silicone molds watch and see um how what the measurement is on the depth i went too fast on this one i went back to the ad and thought oops that was me not them so now i have these pumpkins that that's a little bit big for a card but you know whatever yeah your 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 lips your butt and your hips will thank you okay so dyes now i want to talk about dyes Yes, before I, I, I don't want you getting up with me in the comments. I don't want to hear it, okay? I am very well aware of the fact that there are sellers on Timu that steal other companies' designs and sell them. I'm aware of that. Don't support that. Don't buy them, okay? I get it, right? So I tried really, really hard to find stuff that appealed to me that is not copyright. You know what I mean? So these are all Timu people. So I got these and I thought that I had seen these before so what I do is I take their image and I put it in Google image search and as long as I don't see it come up on like scrapbook.com or Simon Says Stamp or you know Sizzix or whatever then I know I'm probably good to go so this one I thought I had seen before but if you happen to know um, that this is from a company please be nice and just tell me in the comments and then I can make sure I take it out of my rotation but here this one's a Timu one 
This one's a Timu one. This cake, I can't even. They digitally colored it, of course. You're not gonna, you're, it's not gonna look like that when you die cut it. And the spiders, like this is a good indication too that they're, here. here's how to tell if they're real Timu, um, like Chinese designers that put stuff on like AliExpress and whatnot. They take pictures of it on their work mat or, you know, you don't see any nice pictures of cards. When you see nice pictures of cards, that's an indication that they've stolen that that image and then they've gone, you know, found it on Instagram or on the company website on the samples or whatever. So if you see pictures of cards, then that's a pretty good indicator that it's copyright. So I got those. I got one other one, but I can't share until... Um, until I make a card with it. And there's a reason, but anyway. And then I got a bunch of these kind of like, you know, just backgroundy ones. So I was really excited about that. So these I get to, I don't know why I didn't print those. Now I got to print those to put in my book. But anyhow, there's that. Now, these items, all of these, oh wait, wait, wait. I got some stencils on Timu as well. I got some stencils that is really difficult for me to cut now. Um, I can't cut, oh, this got some little pieces left in it, but nevertheless, I can't cut things too, too intricate, and I really liked that one. And at a dollar something, I'm like, I'm buying them. So I got this one, and then I got this one, and then I got this one, and this one I'm gonna use tonight, okay? So you're gonna get to see that one in action, but I did get some stencils. So now all these items I'm gonna show you now, I got for $5 a piece. Sorry, don't be jelly. Don't be don't be hating on me. I got some really good deals like this guy for $43.30 Canadian for $5. We all know that's Tim Holtz, right? So love that. Um, oh, I also got this on Timo. I keep complaining that I want a six inch T-square. And the girls keep telling me, get one on Timo, get one on Timo. So there it is. I'll have to get Todd to drill a hole. Oh, it comes with that. It looks like it comes with this stuff you got to peel off. Like it looks kind of milky up here. I don't know. I'll have to play with it. But I'm going to get Todd, Todd to drill me a hole <clears throat> so I can hang it. Honeybee. This is the Honeybee um, Fortune Cookie Set. So you get this. And look at this. This would have been $60 for the stamps and dies. So I would, I would not have spent $60 on this. Number one, I don't need dies because I have a brother. So with that being said... Um, look at all these little sayings, right? So you get all these sayings and then you get this fortune cookie and the dies allow you to kind of slip it in and, and have it stick out or put it like you can die cut this <clears throat> and then die cut the whole back and put it in. And then I don't know. I have to watch a video. There's a lot of dang dies in here. I should probably watch a video on all the things you can do. Look at this one. It looks like you can pull it out. So anyway, five bucks, I figured, what the hey? And I got on video call with my good friend Heather, and I was walking around showing her the things, and she got one too. This here is Pink Fresh, and it is the Songbirds on Branches foil plate. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. I really like that. $35 for $5. A stamping Bella for $5. This is the one I got. She's holding a happy a, ha a ha happy birthday from all of us. Kitty and little doggy. So, so cute. And I love that it's on rubber. And then I got these. Tim Holtz. Uh, this, this is the first Tim Holtz stencils I've ever bought. These would have been $25 for these three. <sighs> I should raise the price of my stencils. I won't, but this one here, I got this die. This is Lawn Fawn, and it just kind of imprints all of this into, it makes a background, and this one is called... They're usually on the front, the name, I think. Stitched Speech Bubble Backdrop. Yeah, Stitched Speech beach Bubble, Stitch Speech Bubble Backdrop by, by, by Rob Boss. All right, so that is my little haul of things I wanted to share with you guys. So there's that done. Now, let's move on to our card. It is, if you read the description, um, oh, here's the other ones I got. I got the little penguins, and I got a little owl, and I got a Band-Aid. 
it's not that big, but I got a Band-Aid one. But the owl, so cute, right? And I mean, oh, look at all the layers. So that was the only picture with the die, so that indicated to me, this one didn't have any cut pictures, so it indicated that they weren't knockoffs. So um, we have got International Techie Day on October the 3rd, and when I read about it, it's not only technology, it's artists and hobby enthusiasts and crafters and everybody alike. So we're that. So I figured, you know what, let's do something. Now, doing a techie card was kind of like, what am I going to do? Where did I put the stuff? Where are, oh, here they are. I thought, what am I going to do? So I put together a cute set of digital stamps for you guys. There is nine. Let me start here. Let me go right there. So there's those three, these three, and these three. Now, the important thing here that I want to point out, there's four different sheets of the same image, and I'm going to explain why. Firstly, a lot of these have shading in them, okay? So if you're struggling with your Copic coloring or where your shade should be or getting the right color of shade, these are going to really help you out because you're going to want to make sure that your darkest color goes in this area. Okay. Now I prefer when I'm coloring to have my images a little lighter. So here, let me put these two together. These are the exact same. Okay. But you see how this one's a little lighter than this one. I like that and I have one completely colored already and I'll show you that when I'm done coloring one that is going to be on the dark color. So here is your dark shade set in black and a light color. You get both of those. Then you get the same images with reduced shades. So if you're kind of like, I don't need the shade too dark. I just, I want them black, but I want the shade a little lighter. So you can see the difference here, dark shade, light shade. Okay. So I lightened the shading up for you. And here I gave you a lighter version of the lightened shade one. Does that make sense? So they're only $3.99. I did, it, 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 they're on the website if you want them. Okay. If you want to play along, if not, don't worry about it. Pull out whatever robot you have. So I've already done this guy. Now I'm going to do, um, because I've got, oh, I said I would do a dark one. Well, this is a dark one. This is a dark one with lighter shade, okay? So I've already done one with light shade. So let's do, oh, he is so stinking cute, this one. I gotta do this one. He's just, I wasn't gonna do such a detailed one because we're so limited on time, but uh, who cares? If you gotta go, you gotta go. You can always watch later, catch up later if you gotta go. So we're gonna color him, but I'm gonna put him to the side because I wanna show you a fun technique for a watercolor background. Watercolor paper. And I'm going to use my liquid Bombay inks. Okay, Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay inks. I did put a link for these down below that goes to Amazon and Blick. But Blick, I believe, only has them in the glass bottles with the dropper, stopper, whatever romper stomper thing in the inside. So I find these to be a lot cheaper. Um, Michael's carries these. So if you watch with and use a coupon, you may be able to snag some, but I did write in the description, I'm going to use orange, turquoise and aqua tonight. Okay. And I've got some wrecked crummy old paint brushes. So I'm going to show you two different ways you can do a background and then you let you decide which one you like. I already have one done and it's dry so that I can do my thing and then color and put them all together for you guys. So I'm going to open these up and make sure that I'm, yeah, I'm in view here. Open these up and I'm going to see what it looks like if I zoom in for you. Okay. So you'll know which color I'm using because you'll, I'll, oh, I'll tell you for the blues, but yeah, there we go. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to wet my paintbrush and you probably won't see all my little water bottle thingies here, but I've got them. Okay. So I'm going to wet my paintbrush and then I'm going to kind of wipe it all off like this. 
all right, so that it's not got saturation wet in there. And I'm gonna come in and I wanna make sure I get a lot of ink, okay? So I'm dipping this in and I'm making sure like the big droplets drop off, but I want a fair amount of ink here, okay? So that's what I wanna do, just splatter it. If you get some big splatters, don't worry about it, okay? All right, so let's wipe this down. Oh, I forgot my paper towel, it's right here. And let's move Bob Ross, because he's going on the wall. And let's move you guys, because I can play with more of you later. All right. Now, I'm going to wet this again, and I'm going to come in, and I'm just going to go back and forth here, okay? And this here, ink, when it dries, it leaves the little circles behind, okay? Which I really like. So that's what I'm going for with this one. Now I'm going to do the orange again, but I'm going to show you another way you can do this, okay? If you don't like the spottiness, it's just how this ink works. So here I'm going to wet both sides. Now I'm going to come in with the orange and I'm going to splatter it down. And then I'm going to wet my paintbrush and I want a little bit more here actually. There we go wipe that off. I'm going to wet my paintbrush and just kind of move that color around, okay? With no rhyme or reason, just move it around, just like that. Now I need this one to dry because blue and orange are not a great combination to color, to mix together. So I'm going to wet my blue paintbrush now and then I'm going to go into my blue ink and I'm just going to do Oh, see, I got some big splatters, but that's okay. Where's my paper towel? Wipe you off because I don't need all that extra ink. Go into my water and I'm wiping it all, wiping it all off because I don't want too much saturation here. And now I'm just going to come in and I just want to kind of, I just want to create a little bit of interest here, okay? I don't want it covered. So I'm going to wipe my paintbrush off so that I can kind of, bring this over top of the orange. The orange is dry, so it kind of makes a gray, but I'm okay with that. So there, there's that one. That one can, whoa, I thought I knocked my coffee over. That one can still dry. Wipe this one off. And I'm gonna bring in my teal. I'm gonna wet it. And again, I'm gonna wipe off the brush. And this is like such a nasty brush too. Look at it. It's like, don't worry about it. It'll work. Okay, use your oldest paintbrushes and then come in a couple little spots there wipe off that extra paint so you're not wasting it and I'm wiping this off because I want to go into my water so wipe that off a bit and then same kind of idea I want this a little bit more dry I don't want it so much so wet so kind of cool right I really like this. Now I'm going to do the orange again because I find that it's not quite as dark as the rest of my area. Let's put a few little darker ones here like this. Okay. Now I'm going to wipe this off and I'm not going to go into the water this time because I want to get a little bit darker on my orange. There we go. And I kind of splattered my orange into my blue. So I'm just going to kind of rub them to kind of help them disappear a little. Wipe that one up a little bit. There we go. So there is one, okay? Just, you imagine your sunsets, right? You could do sunsets with these and a darker color on the bottom. But let's now go back in here, wet this up again, and bring in the blue. I'm just gonna kind of splatter it down a little bit. Wipe it off, get my water. I'm going to blend this up. There we go. And then the orange, I kind of want that to disappear there. There we go. Let's get a, let's get a better blend going right here. Just going in the orange water. There we go. And then I can bring in my teal. I only let it dry because orange and blue <laughs> don't really go together so great, right? And then orange I'll and blue coffee. Orange and blue make cockapoo poo, exactly. Ask Karen, she knows. 
And then I'm going to do my teal and I'm going to blend that up into the blue. Okay. So either way, I mean, you can have fun with this. Um, I need a little bit of orange here. I feel like my blue is kind of overpowering things here. Chris is asking if there are alcohol links. I'm not sure. No, the these are water-based. So there is those together. Now I will show you this one when, it, when it's dry, okay? So I'm going to put it to the side here. So here, let me zoom out. Here are the two side by side, okay? So you have this one and you have this one. So I have, this one's dry. I did this one earlier today. I got a little bit of blue up in the yellow or orange, if you will, um, but I'm totally okay with that. So this is the one I did earlier today. It's nice and dry. So what I'm gonna do now is use my paper towel here. Excuse me, paints, thank you. And we're just gonna wipe these off. I'll clean them after. I want to use some Simon Hurley um, Lunar Paste and with that stencil I got off of Timu. So let's see, I think I could have used a Mayanki Fingers stencil. I like this one though. I just really like this stencil. I don't know, maybe I should make one like this, but I really like this one quite a bit. And this is, I don't know, here, I'll, I'll put this up here so you could freeze frame it and maybe type in the number. Oh, I can't even get it to, to focus. Focus. There we go. So you could pause and then maybe you could type in that number or something and this the, the product will come up. It's really difficult. I don't link to Timu, right? So nevertheless, let me wipe all this off and get our... They are watercolors. They're just liquid watercolors. <clears throat> so it's just liquid watercolor, basically. Basically, that's all it is. Now, the thing I don't like about this, oh, well, it's probably wider than my card because this is wider than a card. So, yeah, this is the, it's a, it's a card size. So I'm just going to line it up the best I can, put my little magnets here. I had a broken one. So I put that on here because um, this the the magnets I've been using were so hard, or sticky, um, magnetized. So then I saw some on Timu and I was like, oh, I'll buy these. And I said to Heather, I'll split them with you so we'll have new magnets. Make sure you read item descriptions because what I thought I was buying were the magnets that are this size because this is what they looked like but they came and they were like this. <laughs> so this is 10. Yes. So I went back to the ad and I was like, Bleh. oh yeah, I didn't read. I, yeah. So I don't know if these like, maybe I should, maybe I should put some, let me see if these work. Cause maybe if I, or I could double them up. I'll use two and then maybe I can, you know, wrap, wrap some washi around them and there's two there. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Whatever. I also got this little thing I didn't show you guys because I always have that one and you can just type in Dappen bottles or Dappen glass bottles, but there's always that one dang embellishment and it's like you put everything away and there. So this is going to be for all my loose embellishments. What I do with them, I don't know, but this makes me feel like I'm not wasting because I'm not throwing them away and maybe one day I will do something. I don't know. We'll see. All right. So Let's get a inky spatula. Where are my spatulas? Here they are. All right. I don't know if this is going to fit in here. I'm going to use Roar. And this isn't going to fit. So plan B. Plan B. Let's use this one. Actually, you know what? Where's that other one? Hmm. Oh, this one. Nope. This one. All right. Fine. The other end. <laughs> I'll just go like this. Oh, Lord. Won't you buy me a mercy things? Okay. My stencil isn't really flat here because my watercolor paper is not flat. I don't know what this is going to look like when I pull it up, but whatever we'll just go with it 
like Tim Holtz says, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit about it. But I will say, I do like the lunar paste. If you saw my um, DIY paste and butters, I didn't have any lunar paste back then. Um, and I wouldn't have known anyway because I wouldn't have had it very long. But Simon and I were talking in a Zoom meeting and he was telling me about how long he had had his paste and it's never dried out on him. And I have to say, Simon was true to his word. I've not had any issues with this stuff drying out on me. And I also want to point out just really quick, um, the golden light molding paste. I bought this January 4th, 2022. And let me just open this. This has a shelf life of five to seven years. Okay. And it is still creamy, buttery. Look at that. Okay, so this is all I use. Um, I do have a lot of the distress ones, but I don't buy them anymore for obvious reasons. I actually had one dry out on me. I couldn't use it fast enough. If you use it really fast and you're, you use the whole container and you want to pay that much, then you do you, boo. It's your, your crafty dollars, right? So that there is the, the only one I use for paste now. I can't find a... A crackle one though that is good I've tried so many different ones and eh, none of them are very good okay so I think that's probably good wipe this all I'm trying to save as much as I can but come on really there we go whoops all right wipe this off and let's see I always love this part this is like the best part the reveal it's like Christmas Let's see what we got. Ooh, it did go under in some spots, but you know what? I'm totally okay with that. Look at that. It looks really cool. So let's let that dry. This guy, we'll put him on a piece of paper towel because I don't have a little bath to put him in. And now let's color. Let's color up an image that'll go on here. And I've got some really cute sentiments too. So put you away. All right. Cool beans. We'll do some coloring. Now, for the coloring, I'm going to use my Copics in combination with some Arteza markers that, oh, look at this. My little thing here. Whoopsie. This thing just dragged right through the card. You see the line? Ah, I almost flipped it upside down. Do you see the line here? It just dragged right through there. But I can maybe, oh, well, whatever. Is what it is. Anyhow, the Artezas, these are available singly on my website, or you can go to Amazon and you buy a pack of 12 of them. I don't know if anyone needs 12 white or six silver and six gold, but you can get the gold and silver combo on my website and the single Arteza white. Now, I switched to these Artezas oh, a long time ago, and I'm still on the same white and same silver. I have not replaced them. Um, so if that says anything about how much I use them compared to how much you would use them, but I switched to them because they color over top of pencil crayons. So I, and when I say pencil crayons, I mean like the Prismacolors and the Fabers and the Luminance, they're waxy. So what happens is when you want to use a Sakura, when you're trying to make your little lines and your accents and stuff, it skips because it's, it's wax and these are acrylic markers. So I'm going to use those and this here stardust is linked and the black gel is linked. These are the colors I'm going to use. I did write them in the description for you, but I am destined to ruin that thing. <laughs> I mean, I'm just destined to ruin that background. Let's move it up here. Let me make sure that guy's dry because we've got, we've got, Okay, you're dry. That's good. And then we'll move you up there. Good Lord. Okay, we've got two, four, and five in the Bs. Under the B, two. Under the B, four. Under the B, five. My little stickers have come off. Two, four, and five for the blues. For our oranges, because blue and orange look awesome together, we've got V or YR, nine, 15, and 16. And then we've got C, zero, zero. Now, I'm also going to use on here this pink and main touch of gloss. I reached to use my, um, my 
uh, crystal effects or glossy accents, whatever it is. And I saw this and I was like, I need to use this because I haven't used it yet. So I opened it and I was like, oh, I wondered, like, I could see the top and I'm like, do I got to cut this? So I squeezed it and I got air came out and I was like, oh, I have never used this and I've never cut that open. And it was open, but it wasn't dry. And I was like, oh, I mean, that's kind of cool, right? So, and I like the effect it did. So I'm going to show you this effect. And if you need glossy accents, crystal effects, whatever, um, the pink and main touch of gloss, I was really impressed by it. So let's color an image. Um, let's, I'm going to, what I'm going to do when I color here is B2 is what I'm going to refer to as light. B04 is what I'm going to refer to as medium. And B5 is what I'm going to refer to as dark. So I'm just going to say I'm using the light. And if you um, want to get right into your uh, Copic coloring, I linked down below my Copic coloring masterclass where we talk about everything in the beginning, everything um, Copics, what all the numbers mean, yada, yada, yada. And then you can also see in there, there are some coloring ones, but the Copic 101 masterclass is listed down there. And if you're an Inky Bestie and you weren't an Inky Bestie back then to watch it, uh, you can get a discount on it. All Inky Besties save 15% on everything on my website, including those grab boxes I was telling you about earlier. So I did light and then I did medium and then I did light. Now I'm going in with my dark just to create some shade. And these little robots are so good to help teach you where to put your, your darker. Now I'm going to medium just to blend out the dark. Get up a little closer here. There we go. And then light to just bring it up to his neck. Here around the little circle. I'm going to color over top of these little buttons here, his little, his little screws, if you will because I'm going to come back after and color over top of those with something else. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to bring in my medium and I'm just going to do a little bit in here and then blend that out because he would not, whoopsie, wrong color. <laughs> that would be fun to blend out. Great. Went in there with my dark, I wanted my light. And normally he would have a little bit of shadow um, cast underneath his neck there. The medium, I'll just go, um, maybe I'll actually, maybe I'll do, I'll do a different color there. Okay. So let's do his feet. I'm going to do both feet at the same time. And these little boxes here, um, you'll notice if you get the PDF, I'm going to color over top of them and then I'm going to color them with something else after you'll see. Um, cause I, I'm, I'm going to make it easy on myself so I don't have to watch whether or not I'm in the lines or, you know, not coloring those going around them yada yada I don't need to worry about that right so that was light now I'm going to go in with my medium and I just do little flicking motions and if you've taken any of my um, coloring classes then you understand why it's easier to blend a flick than it is a straight line so it kind of feathers it all in so that I'm going in with my light now and I'm blending that medium and then I want the littlest bit of dark and I'm just doing tiny little lines like this just because I want it to line the bottom. And I have so much saturation here because I put down so many colors that it's just naturally going to blend. You're not even going to see a line there. So I'm not too worried about it. So here finishing it off with the lightest color. And then on this side, with the lightest color. And I left that one because I'm going to do that a different color. So over top of that middle piece, I'm going to do my blue light. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the medium, the B04, which is pretty much going to be that first little rectangle. And I am going to kind of blend that because I'm going to go lighter up on the next rectangle. And then the dark, just making sure that I fill in all the little areas. There's no little white parts left in here. 
there we go medium always to blend out your darkest color and then the light to blend everything back together and the light you only want to go as far down as your medium right so there now let's do these so i'm going to do both arms i'm going to color over top of those little boxes but after you'll see i'm going to put something else over top of that so that it adds some interest i'm going to do both of these at the same time if you struggle with blending do one at a time okay if you struggle or if you don't go too fast do one at a time because you've got to get that you can't let the saturation get dry and when you turn your card your piece over you should get a really good indication of what you're coloring on this side if you're not getting this really dark here you're not applying enough ink and that's a good indication that you're you're not getting that blend that you want so if you're struggling with that check that out so that was my dark and then my medium to blend out the dark so there's no harsh line and then come in with the light to blend out the medium so there's no harsh line. I don't take the light down to where the dark is, just as far as where the light color is. So there's that. Okay, then we're gonna do his helmet. Let's do his whole helmet in blue. So I'm gonna start with my light. I'm just gonna sneak up here and I'm gonna come around the corner and I'm gonna stop Right about where that starts and that starts. I'm going to do the same on this side. And I'm going to work quickly because I don't want things to get too, too dry. And then our medium. So I'm going to bring the medium down there and then all the way up the side where I did the light. And then around the corner, but I'm going to come just shy of where I ended with the light color, okay? So again, a little further down than where I started the light all the way along here and then just shy of where I did the light I'm gonna bring in the light now and blend that in because it's wet right now right so you want to blend it in when it's wet and then you don't get those puddles looking like you dropped water on your card or on what you're coloring if you will Okay, and then our dark. So our dark is going to go all the way along the bottom because that's where the biggest part of the shade is going to be from his face, or I'm going to pretend so, or his mask, his dome that he's wearing. And then the dark, I'll bring it up around to about halfway up the ear, so up to about the middle of the ear. And then I'll blend that out with the medium color, so four. And that's about good. Now here... I'll finish off, shoot, I got my colors mixed up. Okay, let me make this side look the same. I guess I did this with light down here then instead of medium. All right, so blend this out. We got a little medium up here that I didn't want, but that's okay. Every mistake, uh, there's no, no such thing as mistakes, just happy accidents. It was meant to be a little darker up there. It was, yeah, it was meant to be. Rob Boss said so. All right, so now I'm just blending out where that medium ends and where my light begins, and then the front will be lighter naturally, okay? Now, I think I'm done with everywhere that I wanna put blue. Yeah, I'm done everywhere I wanna put blue. So now we're gonna color with orange, just to create a little bit of difference in here. So when I say light, I'm talking about VR15. When I say medium, it's Sorry, YR. I don't know why I'm saying V. There's no such thing as V. YR15 is my light. YR16 is my medium. And YR09 is my darkest. And if you want to understand why the light, the, the low number is the darker one, darker than the, you got to, you got to take the master class so that you understand how all of that works. So let's start with our lightest. I'm going to do both ears at the same time. And I'm going to start with my light and I'm just going to color about halfway up feathering. And then I'm going to come in with the medium and I'm going to just come same kind of where I put the light color and then I'll go with the light a little blend out that a little bit higher but not all the way up and then my darkest color just a little bit at the bottom for some visual interest so it looks a little bit more 
realistic, blending that out with the medium, and then coming in with my lightest color and finishing off the top. Now, the reason why I leave that white, that area white, is because when you're coloring, where's my little page I was using? Oh, that's the stencil. Um, here, okay. So when you're coloring, this is a lot lighter than this when it dries, okay? See the darker here and the slighter? So that's why I leave the top so that when I blend that out and I'm done, yeah, I almost have two different colors there of the light, do you know what I mean? So the more ink that you put on it, the darker it's gonna get, right? So let's do a medium here and a, and a, and a light. Actually, yeah, for this one. For this one we'll do light and I'm going to do a line. I'm it's kind of breaking my rules here, but it's a small area and I'm good at blending. So bring in the medium and then I'm going to blend out that medium with the lightest color. I might even come in and just put a tiny little bit of dark right there, a tiny little bit there, just and then blend that out with the medium just in the corners and then with my light there we go just a little something something now on the shoulders it's going to be darker here than down here because the light like his head is going to cast a shadow you know what i mean and down on these ones i did it light here because th there's nothing shadowing here and then these are light in the fronts because it's in the front of him right so i'm going to turn them upside down because i like to flick this way and if i got them this way that means i got to flick this way and i go out of the lines too much so I'm going to start at the top with my light and I'm going to go about halfway on both sides and then bring in the medium and I'm just going to kind of go just a teensy itsy bit shy of where the light was and I'm going to blend that out with the light going down about two thirds now and then come in with the darker color and I'm just putting a little bit and it's just little marks like this okay just to get that shadow effect there and blend that out with your medium and again these are just little marks just like this and then the light I can blend that all and bring it all the way down now so there okay let's do the same here um, for his legs but I may oh, I might get three colors in here eat these little tiny areas I mean I could actually, let's do this with medium and dark and not the light, just so that you can see. So that was the medium I, co I covered completely where the light was. And then my dark, I'm going to do just a teensy little bit of the dark. And then I'm going to blend out with the medium all the way down to there. Because it would naturally be a little darker in here because it's such a short little space, right? So you can totally get away with that. I think I might even do the same thing under here with the medium and the dark. I got a little bit of blue in there. I'm hoping that the dark is going to push that down. Hopefully, we'll see. Push the blue down a little bit. And then let's do the center here, the center circle uh, light. I'm going to do half light and then a little bit of medium tiny little bit of dark such a small space back with my medium and then the lightest color at the bottom a little bit of shadow there oh and this piece um actually you know what let's save that one it's for the other color okay now let's do his arms all in orange so actually this part yeah, I gotta do this in orange. So light, and then I'm going halfway down his ha hands, covering that whole area, halfway down his hands. I'm gonna actually cover this whole area over top with the medium. I'm gonna put a little bit of medium over the light, cover that whole area with medium, a little over the light. Now here, a little bit of dark, a little bit of dark, a little bit of dark, a little bit of dark for the shadow. Blend out that dark everywhere in the same order you laid it down with the medium. And then finish this one off with your lightest color. Like 
there. It's coming together really nicely. And then you can use your Secura for, where are you, number five? Where are you, subject number five? Up here. <laughs> it's somewhere in here. I need it to appear. <sighs> On your mark, get set, go. I thought maybe if I looked this, oh, oh, there it is. <laughs> it was put in the wrong way. Okay, so I'm going to scribble this, make sure it's working. And I'm just going to kind of color over top of these little areas where I went over out of the lines. And the reason why I use the Secura here and not the Arteza is this has got such a fine point and this is such a little area that that kind of just worked out how I needed it there. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do his boots on top of its boots here and then we'll call it good. And then I'm going to bring in my silver. So the top of the boot here, I'm in focus, right? Yeah. It's as much as I can um, zoom in too. So I'll hold them up for you. Don't worry. And I did color this entirely in um, the light version as well. So you could see the difference. Um, and many of you have probably never colored in a digitally light printed version because <laughs> unless you print unless you stamp in gray you know what I mean you've never done that so I would I invite you to challenge yourself if you are picking up the robots to challenge yourself to use the light colored ones and just to see how how it changes the whole effect right so you'll see when I show you the other one so these are all done now I'm going to come in with my, my Secura Stardust. And the reason is, is because there's little areas where if I colored the whole thing in with this and it covers the lines, it's not gonna make sense. So if I use this and it still creates that silver, so I'm doing all the outsides of this part of his leg, and then the inside part here where the joint is, now everything is silver Everything is silver, but you can still see all the variation. And in IRL, when I move him, you, he actually sparkles a little bit. Now, remember we colored over top of those little boxes. So now you can come in over top of those boxes because this covers completely. So why stress yourself out trying to color around these boxes when you're not going to see them anyway? Like down in here, there's one little box here, one little box there. Another one here, one there, and then on his arms, there's some little boxes there. I just want to kind of create these little accents, right? So you can color these in with the silver. Okay, and then this one, I think, yeah, let's do this one totally in silver, cover the block. And then this one I'll do totally in silver. And then the other ones I'm going to do with the sparkle. So this one and this one. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I want to, I don't really need to do that step. Um, on the other one, I jelly rolled his eyes. Um, I'm not sure I really need to. Let me have a look. I don't wanna show you guys yet, but let me have a look, see if it makes a difference. I think, I think I'll try to, oh, I'm determined to ruin this. Are you dry? Okay, you're, you're dry. You're safe. Let me see. Yeah, you're dry. All right, you're dry. Okay, so the on the other one, I colored the eye black, but I went around the little white spots. I don't think I need to do that, but these little white spots, I do want to kind of brighten them up a little bit. So I'm going to bring in my Arteza there. And then I want to use the lightest blue, okay? And I want to go around his eye. You could use an entirely different blue here. You could go in with a B00 or even a B000, triple zero, quadruple zero. Actually, I don't think there's a double zero. I think it's triple. I don't know. I can't remember right now which ones have triples and doubles and quadruples. <coughs> okay. Now, 
I should have done the gray before I did the Arteza because of the fact that this is a paint marker and now it's got to dry. So I'm going to do my lining now, okay, my dots. So I like to just do a line with a couple little dots. I'm going to do the same here, a little line. Um, I'll pro oh, wait, I forgot this little spot. There's two little buttons right here, whatever these little screws are, and this circle thing. So this circle thing, I'll do the inside of the circle. I went out of the line, so I'm going to do all of it <laughs> with silver. And this one too, all of this with silver. Here we so go. there's a B double zero, B triple zero, and B triple zero. <coughs> there is a double, okay. So you could go with the lighter ones if you wanted to. But it's not necessary, okay? So let's finish our lining now. So I'll come up here, oh, get this going again. And I wanted to point out too, um, when you first open your Arteza marker after not using it for a while, do one pump and then wipe it all off. This is a plastic tip, it'll never get wrecked on you. So one pump because pumping it cracks all of the dry, because uh, all your paint dries around here. So when you pump it one time, it gets it going and then just wipe it in a baby wipe and then it's perfect for you, right? So, and then you may want to scribble a little bit because after a pump, it's kind of thick. So let's go here with a couple of lines and then let's do one across his boots here. Another one over here just to add some something, something, maybe one here, one here. And maybe one over here. I think that's probably it's probably good. I'm just doing some little ticks there. Yeah, I like that. And let me see if his eyes are dry. Yes, they are. So I'm gonna use my C double zero and I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna color his whole face because this is glass, right? So not actually going to color over his eyes anyway, so I don't know why I was so worried about that. But there we go. And he has something that the other guy didn't have. I kind of went in the over the line here with the blue, so I'm going to add a little bit extra there because when you use your C zero um, or this one, I, one color pushes the next color down, right? So now it does look a little darker over here. Let me blend that out. And I'll make this side a little darker so it looks like a shadow, like I intended to do this. Let's do it up here too. It's probably really difficult to see on the video, but I'll bring them up here in just a sec. So now I'm just doing some shadows in the corners just to make it look intentional that I meant to kind of do that, which I didn't. So he has a mouth though. So I'm going to pull out... R, I'll just do R00 just to add a little bit of pink there inside his mouth because the artist intended for the mouth to be open. All right, so there's that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this touch of gloss and because it has to dry, I have another one that I'm going to um, bring it up and compare them for you guys. So this here, if you just go right around the outside, it creates a dam, just like if you've ever worked with watercolor and you bring in the, the water in the flower, if you will. Then when you add your color, it only goes where that, that water is. It doesn't, it doesn't spread and fan out. So this here works the same way. So I'm just going to go all the way around his face and take your time here and just follow that line all the way around his face and I found that this stuff is very nice like it's self-leveling which I really appreciated so all the way around and now I'm just gonna squeeze a little harder and go back and forth just meeting up with those lines I want this one to be a little deeper than the last one now it looks milky right now but trust me this will dry clear you'll have no problems whatsoever yeah, that's nice and thick, way thicker. So I like it. Now I am gonna wipe this off because I wanna give it its best chance at not um, clogging on me. And I am gonna take a pin and I'm just gonna clean out any glue that would naturally be sitting there 
and this has a little thing up there so how i don't know it just didn't go hard so i was like yay i'm happy about that and i would tell you if i didn't like it right so here he is and this will dry clear like i'm going to show you on the next one but i want you to see him with all those little lines so cute right now let's compare him to one that has gray I want you to see the difference there. Are you seeing the difference when, oh, I'm gonna drop you. Let me put you in this hand. You see the difference? So this, you barely see the lines at all, where this guy, you see his lines a lot more. So on those stamps, you decide what you like better. I'm gonna move him actually up here because I'm doing things and I'm like liable to, liable to, Yep, I'm liable to do something that I regret. Now, I just had my Simon Says Stamp Scissors. I just used them. Where did they go? Oh, no. Oh, there, they're in the back. They got put in the wrong slot. Because I could get my brother out. Ugh. But I can't be bothered. I, I don't mind fussy cutting things, so... Um, whatever I'm just gonna fussy cut them out and then we're gonna put them on the card I'm gonna show you something um, you may not think about when it comes to sentiments so I'm gonna show you what I did today and I mean it's, I you probably have you know but um, you'll see I'll explain it all right let me take this off here too because that's kind of in my way let's go back over here Oh, I just went to the eye doctor when Sally ate my glasses and I feel like I need glasses again, but they said I didn't. I can't even see with my computer glasses. It's like I need to buy a big magnifying, magnifying glass and put it here and then put work underneath it because I can't see. So it's fussy you know cutting. It's kicking in when you have to take your glasses off to read the fine print. But no, I'm the opposite. I can't see anything in front of my face. I can see far away, no problem. So I can't see, if, if I don't have my glasses, I can't see anything. Like you in the car yesterday, looking at all the stamps I was showing you on the phone. Heather had her glasses off and her nose like right up to her phone, right? It was quite comical on my end of it. But I, on the other hand, would have my glasses and I would pull the phone away. Because that's how it's easier for me to see. Like when I lay down to watch TV in my Lazy Boy, I take my glasses off. That's why Sally got them. I put them on. I took them off and I had them resting on my chest. And yep, she ate them. So I've, I'm having to take Chloe off of the Benadryl. Um, Chloe's on Benadryl because of all the smoke and pollution and allergies and stuff. I mean, what a finicky dog. So she was on liquid Benadryl, but she was higher than a kite. So I had to reduce it, reduce it, reduce it. And now she's now discovered her reflection in glass. So in the fireplace, the shower door, she's like going crazy for the shower. And she paused because she wants in the other side to make friends with the other dog. So she doesn't realize it's her, obviously, because the dog does not have the mental capacity to understand that. I watched a documentary on that, and there is a bird and one other animal. I can't remember. Like, it's very, very limited amount of species that actually, I think one of them is a rooster, but they see their reflection and they comprehend that that is them. But anyway, so Chloe, she's doing this thing with the fireplace, the like I said, the um, shower, yada, yada. And it's driving me crazy. And then, and then she'll like, we have a basket in the corner on the floor. And she's like trying to get in around that. Like there's a mouse or a squirrel. And she saw it run there. And she goes running over there. And she's like, sniff, sniff, sniff. And she goes to the other corner. Because she's higher than a kite, the poor little thing. So I've taken her off the Benadryl completely. I want to see if that changes the behavior. Because I'd rather her have the sneezing and whatnot than be stoned the poor little thing you know what I mean so I'm trying to determine if that is really what's going on or like god forbid like she has a tumor or something in a certain part of her brain causing her to you know 
it's a possibility, right? So I'm hoping that's not it. And we're going to narrow it down to the medication, right? So, yeah. Did you guys hear about that woman in Australia, the senior lady? She was in her 60s. She's the first person ever, but she was very sick for a long time and they couldn't figure out why. And finally, they figured it out. She had a three-inch worm in her brain. First time ever in the history of mankind. And they got it out and she lived. But the craziest part about it all is this worm is only found in snakes. <laughs> So they're like, how you contracted that, first of all, is, is, is a mystery and how you, how it got to your brain and just lived up there and kept growing to three inches. I was like, it was just absolutely crazy. So nevertheless, here we are. This guy is done. Let's cut you up to match a card. Now I want to do a mat on here. So I might get most of that off or, uh, Okay, let's cut this side first so I know where I'm at. So this, there we go. And I need my card to be four. So let's cut that off. It is what it is. I've got lines there. So be it. I'm going to cut a little of the top off. And if you have a problem with your paper moving, put it down here because there's this line down here. Let me zoom out. I didn't realize I was zoomed in on the pussy cutting either five and a quarter I'm going to take off more on the bottom than the top there we go all right so I think he looks cute yes yes now what I did for my sentiment I have the all to new where'd they go I linked them for you guys the all to new um bold sentiments and this is the this is the stamps here and I was like, this is, this is where my brain went today. I was like, oh, this is awesome. It's all one sheet. I could just stamp like a whole bunch of them and cut them all out. So I opened it and they were all individual. And I just, my heart sank and I died inside. And I was like, oh, well, I guess I'm putting them on my Misty in that order because it just makes sense to compartmentalize and do a bunch, okay? Because you can have that little place, excuse me, Rob Boss, that you keep. These are all word sentiments. So I have another one down here, hello. It's over there, but underneath the Bob Ross. So here, and you, don't, you only have to cut it in sections because when it comes time to actually use it, then you come in and you just, trim it up out of your little box or little container whatever oh wait till you guys see I saw a new I saw this person on Instagram she was gilding using her gilding flakes she keeps her gilding flakes in a sandwich container I was like what a bloody genius why did I not think of that because I'm always trying to get them back in that container and you open that container and they fly all over the place she just has this sandwich container has her little thing she picks them up keeps the little image over top of that everything goes back in and she closes it on things she's bloody brilliant but anyway that's how you do that okay so um here i just pulled out a brand new misty sticky so i've got to bend it just like you would a cricket mat bend 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 this not your paper and then your paper will come off nice and straight okay so there is that now let me put this in here because my stamps are dirty I don't want them to get on that. So here, same thing, okay? All you do is cut it when you need it. So, um, techie, I don't know. What are we going to put on here? Um, missing you so much. Hello, my friend. Is, it, is there a hello, my friend? Well, you just cut out hello, and then you've got my friend on the edge there. I got my friend on the edge. Oh, yeah, my friend. That one, I cut a little bit skinny, though. I'd have to cut again. There's, this one's a lot skinnier. I'm going to cut this one apart, I think. I think we're going to go like this. I'll show you. Let's see how this looks. And let's cut this really quick and get it out of there. And these, I'll just cut these in little pieces like this so that they fit in my box. 
like so and they'll all go in there but this one and you i'm gonna stab myself moving around like this with these scissors open i'm awfully brave I'll go like this i want to cut this in three though i think can you see yes so we're going to cut this one in oh, i got a little bit of white here it's going to show because my background's not white get off there there we go so we're going to go missing you missing snip you so snip you so you so you so much <laughs> you so much missing <laughs> And I'm trimming off the ends because I, if it's more here and more on the much, it looks kind of like something's wrong. So, yeah, these, I'm telling you, these are just like, I, I, I don't know the difference. You know, the only difference is the paper sticks out a little more here. And this one's a little wider. But this is, and this way, these are a little shinier, the release paper. These ones are more matte, but... I don't care. Here, let me use these and see. Let me see how I feel about them. So let's pull out. They're not black, but that's okay. I would have used black ones here, but I want to use these just for this. I mean, they're super sticky. Much. Ah, don't fall on the floor. Got my tweezers there too. Okay. Yeah, I mean... They're sticky. I had a hard. I had to go back a second time to get that one out. And then you got the outside, so you can cut your little strips when you want just a little strip of something. And these, if you take your scissors and you cut the little, I'm not gonna call it a damn acorn, octagon, little bee thingy, whatever. If you cut that in half, then you get even smaller ones, right? So. I like to do that. I do that quite often. They're very sticky. Like they want to stick to each other. So I'll put you back in your little hole in there. We'll pull out one more. So yeah, super sticky. I like these. I'll be buying those again from Timu for sure. Um, I'll, I'll try and see because that is a very particular item where, you know, you could get someone that made crappy ones. So I'll try to get the link and I'll put it um, in the, I'll put, I'll put it up, um, somewhere in the description i'll try to remember okay to do that i'll try to remember to do that tomorrow all right so our little dude here i was going to call him our rocket man i was just watching i guess um mick jagger is talking about going on tour he's 80 so if, if you feel old don't worry because mick jagger is 80 and bob barker just died rest in peace bob barker i think he was 99 that's like holy moly 99. I gotta use these ones because I gotta do. Oh, actually, you we, know what? We saw the stones the last time they came to Calgary, and he looked old then. He looked old then. <laughs> I'm gonna use these here. And that was a long time ago. Yeah. Like, like 20 years ago. Yeah. I like Mick Jagger. Okay, I'm gonna leave one of the Timu ones in there. So, here. I'm feeling a little bit like he needs to go on a little mat. Because I'm feeling like there's a lot going on here. So let me just see here, okay? Because I just kind of feel like he needs a little bit of a mat. So you are how wide? You are almost two inches. So let's go to, I'll start at two. I think two and a half is too much. And how tall are you? Oh, look at You're three foot and a half and an eighth. Three foot? <laughs> Oh, and then eight. So let's go. Let's go to there. Okay. So let's see. Yeah, that's too big. Okay. So let's go. Let's go. That's too big. Too big. Too big. Let's go something like right about there. I think whatever that is, two and an eighth maybe. Just because I got so much going on on my background here, I just feel like. It needs to kind of get grounded a little bit here. He's got a lot going on. I don't know if I like that either. Maybe I need to cut around that. Maybe I need to mat him on black. Or, hold on. I got another idea. I got another idea. Uh...
flip it around that way. Let's go somewhere about here, two and a quarter. And then I'm going to tear this here, rough it up a little bit. Like that, put this down. I can't think I should put it on this side, but then I got to deal with that. And I didn't intend, oh, I could do it this way. And then he could go right here. Yeah, but this has to be embossed. We can't leave it like this. And I think I have kind of a techy kind of, I mean, oh, what about this? No. I don't know what to use here now. Um, Do you have like a ears? I, I have that Tim Holtz here, this one. This one. So let's try this one. Yeah, let's do this one. Because this is all like Circus components. Yeah, it's called Circuit, actually. So let's do this one. So now, if you have the universal plate system and read it, then you'd be able to get this through no problem. But me, on the other hand, I'm going to lose one of those. One of those are going to Wilbur on me. Okay, I, I will be right back. BRB, she says. All right, so we have the plate and the D, but I don't think that works. I think I use the C, to be honest with you. I don't think that this combination works. I really don't. I think I use a different combination because I'm pretty sure I use a different combination. Oh yeah, I use a different combination. I knew it. So I'm going to put the C because I think that's what I use for this particular one. Because, of course, Spellbinders is telling you what to use with their 3D die. And this is a Sizzix 3D die. And that worked out beautifully. Oh, crud, I ripped it. Okay, that's all right. I'll just put it, I'll glue it back. You'll never notice. You'll never notice. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's so much better. Okay, perfect. All right, let's get our glue. I like that a lot. I'm going to put a little bit extra down here so I can fix that. And a little bit extra up here so I can fix that. This is a thin piece of paper, too. This is only 65 pounds, and that went through it. Whew. That was a tight, a tight squeeze on the embossing there for sure. But you will never know. So hide it all. All right. This was a good choice. And this here, by the way, uh, oh, I told you already what it was called. Circuit. So you slip down there a little bit more. And you slip over there. I may have to trim this up a little bit. Because the, the embossing shrinks it quite a bit. In my paper, I cut it to size. So I may have to trim it just a teensy little bit. Shave off like the smallest little bit, which I'll have to do on this side now to make it all even when I put it on a mat. There we go. And then let's pull the mat out. Now I feel like I need brass here because of the black let's see where is my brass one i've already got one cut so we're lucky i think this yes 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 now do as i say not as i do take a rectangle put it in here die cut out the rectangle so you stretch your materials this is from michael's though so you know i get the mom to buy one get one like half off and whatnot so i'm like uh i can't be bothered michael's is very inexpensive but if you're paying like you know um tonic 5.99 canadian for like 10 pieces then you want to cut the middles out right so we'll put this bye, guy bye. here bye lee see you later put that there look at that I really like that so I'll bring it up so you can see it we got a little hole there flip it over there we go so 
really quite cool. Really quite happy with this. So let's lay it out where we're going to put things. He's going to go here. And we're going to do missing. Yuso. Yuso. <laughs> did, did you guys know that? No, oh, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Oh, I don't want it. I don't want that to be taken the wrong way. And then so many people are going to go, oh, I hate it when people do that. All right. Missing you so much. Missing you so much. There. I kind of think maybe I should stagger it like this. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Okay, I'll straighten it up when I get him on here. Missing you so much. Techie person. Crafty person. Whatever. They don't even have to be any of those things. This is just a cute... This would make a great a masculine grandson. birthday. What's that? For a grandson or a there. Yep. Yeah. Little, and there's you could even put little eyelashes on them before you put the glossy accents. Take a number zero, a point zero five, and uh, just go ch -ch -ch, little eyelashes, and then you've got a girl done. Okay, missing, missing you so much. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any complaints about these team. What do you call these things? Foam? Dimensionals? Yeah, that's the word. Thank you. Tell you. Some days. Missing you so much. Oh, we got to have it even. Missing you so much. Perfect. Then we get a card. I have them cut. I do not have them folded. There we go. Okay. Okay. Why don't monsters eat ghosts? Has something to do with boo poo. I don't know why. Because they taste like sheet. <laughs> That's cute. That's cute. You couldn't even get you couldn't even get a kid in trouble for telling you that one, like, you know, like you you can't. I just thought it was pretty funny. I think it's cute. I think it's cute. I think it's cute. All right, there we go. And really, I don't even think it needs any embellishments because the um you've got the reflection here on the lunar paste, and then there's the reflection here. And then there's the glitter. So I think that that's all it needs. So again, if you came late, definitely rewind um, or watch the beginning where I explain all of these and all the different four sheets that you get, right? So um, it's a really good deal. And if you're a bestie, you get a discount. And if for some reason it wants to charge you shipping, message me so I know because I think I've got my system fixed so anyhow with that being said thank you for oh, and as you can see I forgot to say too we're back on Thursdays because it's September so in case you didn't know we're back on Thursdays yes and I have scheduled them all month so you see me all month on Thursday if you're a bestie you'll see me Wednesday and Thursday starting next week Wednesday and Thursday, you'll see me for color with me. And those videos, they're not even a video. They're just a hangout, like, like, like kind of like me and Heather, but you can see each other or not see each other. You can lay in bed in the dark and talk or not or whatever. Um, color with me. We usually go longer than the two hours that is set, but nevertheless. And then the following week, we've got um, mixed media. So besties. Let me know what you want to see. Um, I'll, I'll post something in the group, you know, if there's a certain mixed media technique you want to see. 
or just tell me during the video, during the event. I'll just pull stuff out and we'll do that. And then the last Wednesday of the month is going to be, I'll try it out. Does it really work like that? And what are the pros and cons? Okay, so the stamping foam, yes, we can see it works, but then does it really bounce back? Is it easy to clean? I don't know all of those things because I have it all here and I've never used it. So we're gonna pull them out, all three of these guys. I was like, why do I have two the same? Because this one's a heart. Um, yeah, so we're gonna pull them out and we're gonna see, we're gonna test out some things. Does it really work? So there's your card, there you have it. Can so I ask you I my ask question? Ask yes, question. Chris, of course you can. Can we get them colored? No, they don't come colored. They come blank like this. But I mean, um, and there's also, in case you're confused, okay, when you purchase this, you'll get a PDF. In the PDF is all of these, so you can print them from anywhere, okay? But at the bottom of the PDF, there's a page five, and it has a QR code and a link to Canva. You don't have to pay for Canva. You never have to give your credit card. That's not like no sneaky business. You can always run on the free version and you can print them from there as JPEG. You can probably even alter them. I don't know. I've never worked with a Canva link before. I have a Canva account, so I just see what I made, but they're in there as well. So you can print them from Canva, whatever you want. You can open them in Canva and save them as something else. They're all JPEG. So anyhow, they do not come colored. Unfortunately, what happened to you? Oh, I put you on a baby wipe. Anyway, with so that being said. Chris had, had a question asking if you explained the emails about the chat. What were we supposed to say yes or no about? So I, I think your email was. Thank you, Patty. Was about um, the Inky Bessie space. Yeah. I know that, but I know we had talked about the chat and you were going to go over the chat. Okay. In one of our Wednesday classes, I think. Yes. Yeah. So on Wednesday, we'll talk about Inky Bestie chat. Um, you have to get invited to it. And then it's instant chat, just like Messenger on Facebook or whatever. So that you can, when you're going to go to Inky Bestie space to stamp, you don't have to go to the group and post a thread. You can just post it in. But the only three people in there right now are me, Jen, and Mary, because I don't think anybody gets what it is. So there is an instant chat talk to me on Wednesday or send me a specific email I want in the chat and I will specifically add you to the chat. Okay. Um, look at what Allie made it the whole night. Thank you, Barbara. All right. Did I miss anything else, Heather? No, I think that was the only other question earlier on. Okay. And what I'm going to do actually I need to work on my um, class card for Scrap and Dippity. So as an Inky Bestie bonus, after this stream ends, I'm going to take a five minute break and I'm going to go into the Inky Bestie space and I'm going to chat with you guys while I tidy up and um, do an after show and I'm going to work on coloring up that card that I'm going to do for that class. Okay, so... Um, I will email you, Elizabeth. I'm not, you don't need to be tech savvy or anything. Nothing like that. All I do is invite you. It goes to your email and it tells you here it is. And if you don't have the Google space chat, then it says click here and then you install the chat just like you would do in messenger. Okay. So I, I don't want to get too, too much into that. Come into the inky bestie space. Um, it's your link your Inky Bestie link for the month, go to the website, come into the Inky Bestie space and chat with me and I will get you all squared away in the Inky Bestie chat tonight, okay? So with that being said, good night, Miss Allie. Heather, would you like to, to say good night verbally? Good night, everyone. Sweet dreams. Yes. Thank you for joining us. And until I see you again, take care and happy stamping. Oh, I put not yet. It said stream. Do you really want to end? And there's now a new button there. <laughs> and I clicked it because that's where the end button used to be. So <gasps> that wasn't awkward. <laughs> Take care and happy stamping.